In this lecture, we are creating our first cute GUI application, and we're going to try and see the anatomy of the app, what kind of files are being created, and what is the purpose for each kind of file that we're going to see. So let's head to Qt Creator and do this. Okay, here we are in Qt Creator, and uh, we're going to create a new project. This time, the project is going to be an application. It's going to be a Qt project. We're going to choose Qt Widgets application. We're going to call it 111 Qt GUI. We're going to save it in the usual location. I'm going to hit next. We're going to choose the only kit that we are targeting, which is desktop Qt 510.1 here. Hit next. We're going to base our app on the Q widget class, hit finish, and your app is going to be generated for you. If you look, uh, this is our application here. Inside we have a PRO file that bundles together every part of your application. You see the name of the application here, you see the type of the application you are creating, and you see the files that make up your application. In the files, we have a main function, which is where everything kicks off to run your application. We define a queue application class that wraps around our application. This is a Qt class, at least defined in the Qt framework. And uh, you see that we include the class here from the Qt libraries. We also have a widget CPP file that is going to contain the logic that controls the view that we have here in this form here. The form is uh, hosted in a file called widget.ui and uh, it is an XML file. They use XML to kind of define the looks of uh, your widgets. And if you run the application right now, you're going to see a widget pop up on the screen. Let's run the application. Look at the compiled process so that you can see things happening. And we should be running in a second. Okay, you see our widget here. So what we're going to do in this lecture is to add a button to this widget and we want for something to happen when you click on that button. This is usually done using signals and slots in Qt, but that's a subject of the next section. In this lecture, we're just showing you how it work so that you have an application that does something. But to understand it, you have to watch the section two of this course, and we're going to go into all the details to make these things work. For now, let's go back to the widget UI file, double click on it, you're going to come here. And if you look on the left here, I want you to search for Q button, Q push button. You're going to have a push button here. So I want you to drag it in the middle here, double click on it and say, click me. So you have your button here. The next thing you want to do is to click on this button, right click on your mouse and hit go to slot. You want to choose clicked in the dialog that pops up here, hit okay and the function is going to be created inside your widget CPP file. And this is where the code that responds to clicks on the button on your UI is going to live. Whenever somebody clicks on that button, something is going to happen here in the on push button click method. And to prove that, we're going to add a debug statement. In Qt, there's a class that is called QDebug. We're going to include it right now. And what we're going to do is to output something to say that the user clicked on a button. You do it like this using QDebug. Okay, you output like you have been outputting things using cout user clicked on a button. Okay. So let's run the application. So this message is going to pop up in application output here. Okay, so let's kill the application first. 
run it again. Okay, you see that we have the button here. And every time you click it, we're going to see a message in the application output. So this is working fine. We are responding to clicks on the button. So what we want to do is to pop up a dialogue when the user clicks on this, okay? How do we do that? Uh, for now, I want you to go to the help tab here. It is where you're going to see the documentation on the classes you're going to be using in your Qt development journey. So click on this. And in the filter box here, type in Q message box. Okay, we want to visit that for Qt510. And they say the Q message box class provides a model dialog for informing the user or for asking the user a question and receiving an answer. They give you a lot of information about the class. You should really read this. But what we're going to do is use one of the static public member methods that are available in uh, this uh, class. And that one happens to be the information one. So we're going to go back in our slot which is the method that responds to the button click. Uh, the first thing we want to do in here, uh, before we do anything in the on push button clicked method here, we want to import the Q message dialog class. So we do that right here, Q message box. It is not Q message dialog. Sometimes I confuse these things. So down here we say Q message box information. It is a static method, so it is accessible from anywhere in the application. The parent for that is going to be this. You see here that they give you a hint on what this class might be looking for. So we're going to give it a parent of this. The title of the message is going to say message. And the text is going to say, you clicked on, on that button. The next thing we want to put in here is a button that is going to show up on the dialog or on the message box, okay? So you're going, it's going to be Q message box, okay. And we're going to end this. And just like this, you're going to have a message box show up when the user clicks on your button here. So let's run the application and see if our logic is working here. Click on this. And you see that it says you clicked on this button. We can click on the OK button to get rid of that message box. OK, by now I think we've done what we set out to do in this lecture. You have done your first GUI application in Qt. You have it running here. You have a dialog. You put in a button and you connect it thanks to have a response when you click on a button. In the next lecture, we're going to take our number guessing app on the next level and give it a UI so that the user can play it from a user interface that is really good. I'll see you in the next lecture.